Today I'm going to be doing a drain and fill the CVT fluid of my 2011 Toyota Prius. Now I went through my maintenance schedule for my Prius and nowhere in there did it have an interval for replacing your CVT fluid. It just had inspected fluid every 50,000 miles or so. But I figure since I'm going to be under my Prius pulling back the plastic shroud to access the fill plug, I might as well replace the fluid while I'm in there. I went down to my local Toyota dealership and spoke to the guy at the parts counter and confirmed what I need is the ATF WS fluid, about 3.6 liters to do a drain and fill on my Prius. Now, before we get started in the procedure, let's go through a few things you're gonna to need to do this. First thing you're gonna need is a 10 millimeter hex that loosens the drain and fill plugs. Next thing you're gonna need is a fluid pump. The only way to get this fluid on the side fill port is to pump it in through a pump like this. Of course, you're gonna need four quarts of ATF WS fluid. You're gonna need some kind of drain pan, so you need a drain pan, and then it's also good to have some paper towels or rags along with it. You're gonna need some plastic gloves, because when this fluid comes out hot and you've got that drain plug in your hand, inevitably, you're gonna get some of that hot fluid on your hands. It's also good to have a measuring cup to be able to measure the fluid after it's been collected. You're gonna need some kind of device to pop the plastic buttons that hold the plastic shroud under your Prius. I like to use this little V-tool. It gets under there and pops the buttons. It's also good to have some, some of these spare buttons around because I always seem to break them when I change my engine oil. Of course, you're gonna need some kind of uh, jack stands and a jack or some ramps to be able to give yourself enough room to get under your Prius to access the drain and fill port. I always like to use my cheap undercar roller that I got from AutoZone to make it a lot more comfortable to move around under my Prius. Okay, now let's step through the procedure. The first thing you're gonna do is Start your Prius up, drive it around, and get it nice and warm. When the uh, fluid's nice and warm, you got a better chance of getting more fluid out of the CVT. Next thing you want to do is elevate your Prius up on ramps or jack stands. Give yourself enough room to get under there. The next thing you're going to do is use your little tool to remove those plastic buttons and get that plastic shroud out of the way so that you can visualize your drain and fill port. First, you're going to want to loosen your fill port. If you loosen your drain port first and drain all your fluid and then find out later that your fill port is stripped or stuck, now you've got a CVT with no fluid in it. So loosen your fill port first, then go to your drain port and drain all the fluid into your drain pan. Next, I always like to measure the amount of fluid that came out, so make sure that I'm gonna put approximately the same amount of fluid back in. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is put your drain plug back in and torque it back to the specified torque specification. This is where we're gonna use our pump to pump our fluid into the fill port. Basically, you just take one end of the hose and put it into your brand new ATF WS fluid at the other end of the hose into your fill port. You pump away like a little maniac until about three and a half quarts are in the CVT. At this point, you might start to see some dripping coming out of the fill port. Have some rags ready to make sure you catch any of that dripping fluid. Once it starts to drip, it's full. The next thing you do is pull out your 10 millimeter hex, replace your uh, fill plug and torque it down to the specified torque. The last step is to just replace your plastic shrouding and put your little buttons back in. This is where having some spare ones around will be helpful because if you've either lost or broken some, you'll be able to put them all back in. That's it, you're done. You've replaced your CVT fluid in your Toyota Prius. Okay, you can see I've got my car jacked up on four jack stands. Um, couldn't use ramps in this situation because the ramp on the driver's side got in the way of being able to access the CVT. I also like to use Four jack stands, it's just more secure, it gives you a little bit more room to work under the car. And it also keeps the uh, vehicle very level. My driveway has a little slant. Okay, we're under the vehicle here, just to kind of orient you where the uh, fill plug and drain plug are. We're looking at the passenger side CV joint right here. And just to the left of that, or just behind the CV joint is the fill plug. Just below the CV joint, is, that right there is the drain plug. So. Just to kind of get you oriented there, uh, those are both facing the passenger side of the car and we are going to loosen the uh, fill plug first to make sure uh, that, can, that can get loose uh, and then we're going to go to the drain plug and uh, loosen the drain plug, get our drain plan in place and start uh, draining the fluid. Okay, I've got my 10 millimeter hex on a long ratchet to get some torque to loosen this 10 millimeter hex for the fill plug. As you can see there, I've got not a lot of room in there, but there I've loosened it and I'll pull my uh, hex out of here now and then start to uh, loosen that uh, fill plug all the way out. Um, it's actually pretty easy to get in there and reach this. Um, but you can see as I'm pulling this out, that fluid looks really black 
and uh, I was a little worried that I was going to have some drainage uh, when I pulled out the fill plug, even though uh, the fill plug is also the level check, so really no fluid should come out of here, but um, a little bit of fluid does come out when I pull the fill plug, just a couple of drips. It just means, you know, that it was at the proper level um, at this time, but you can see how black that fluid is. It is nasty. This car's got 100 3,000 miles on it. Um, so anyway, so I'm going to take the uh, fill plug and put it aside and get ready to start working on the uh, drain plug. Okay, I've got my 10 millimeter hex on the drain plug this time and I got my long handled ratchet and putting a little pressure and it loosened it and it popped my uh, 10 millimeter hex out after it did that. Um, I got my drain pan in position. See that cross member right there? When this fluid comes out of there you gotta be careful when it hits that it doesn't um, splash you and get you in the face so make sure you got some goggles on and you're protected and you got your drain pan in the correct position to be able to catch the fluid i kind of use my glove there to kind of soften the, the flow as it first pours out but um so just let it give it 10 or 15 minutes let all the fluid uh drain out and we'll get ready to uh, measure it okay i got my measuring set up here i've got my um, fluid collecting my drain pan on the right there. I have a quart of fluid that's already been measured out and I'm going to go through and do this with the rest of the fluid, pour it into the measuring cup and then pour it into my pan. Here I've got three quarts um, into the pan, pan right there and then I've got the remainder which is about uh, uh, 300 uh, milliliters uh, in the measuring cup. So I ended up with with uh, three and a quarter quarts approximately and uh, as you can see this is just to show you the condition of this fluid i mean it's it's black i mean it's nasty uh put a little bit on a paper towel here to kind of show you how dirty this oil was at 103,000 miles it needed to be changed okay i'm reinstalling my uh drain plug just uh, screwing that in finger tight i got my torque wrench all set up for uh tightening at 29 foot pounds and you'll see I'm torquing it here and if just listen here for my clicks. Okay. And there it is, okay, nice and tight, torqued. all torqued down. Okay, here's my setup for my pump. I just have the hoses cut to the proper length. Um, the bottom hose there goes into the uh, bottle of new fluid and the top hose I've cut long enough to be able to hold the pump and be able to get it uh, set up nicely into the fill port Okay, you can see I've got my uh, pump in position here. I've got my hose into my fill port I have my bottle um, I have it stabilized there with a clamp to make sure it doesn't fall over and I'm going to start pumping the fluid into um, the CBT uh, one quart at a time. It's a little difficult switching the hose from one new bottle to the next and making sure that you're able to drain each bottle all the way through um, but just make sure you secure your bottle somehow to make sure it doesn't fall over because you don't have a lot of room under there to uh, stabilize your bottle but just you know pump it in one one uh, quart at a time until you've got it fill okay i'm just reinstalling my fill plug now so um, as you can see I got it positioned there it's a little bit of fluid dripping out which is exactly what you want that's the the level check also so if you've got a little dripping you've know you have filled it up all the way I got it finger tight I got my torque wrench ready to go set for 29 foot pounds and um, got an extension on there so I could reach in there pretty well so yeah so just listen for the torque wrench clicking and now that's fully torqued down and move to the next step Okay, I'm preparing to put the shroud, the plastic shroud back in under the car. I've got some of my tools here. I've got some extra buttons. I've got some brand new ones on that side. I got the old ones on the other side. Uh, I did break a few while I was uh, removing the plastic shroud. I got a flashlight, screwdriver, some removal tools, and I got my special uh, plier tools for uh, removing uh, shroud buttons, and they also can be used for putting them back in. So let's get under the car and reinstall the plastic shroud. Now I kind of cheated when I took off my shroud and didn't completely remove it. I recommend pulling the extra buttons off and completely removing it because it was a pain to get under the car with it partially removed. I had it tied up with this string, but it kind of sucks. So definitely pull your 
uh, shred off completely. So for putting it back in, I just folded it back and replaced the plastic buttons. If you're going to try this drain and fill procedure on your Toyota Prius, I highly recommend you watch this video by this guy Nuts and Bolts. He did a really awesome video on doing the same thing. I just uh, wanted to make the video doing it the way I like to do it, but his video is awesome. Uh, I used it for uh, when I first did uh, my drain and fill before I made my video. Um, so I highly recommend you watch this guy. He did just amazing um, job on this procedure. I always like to watch a couple different videos before I attempt something like this. So I think you'll get definitely a lot from his and hopefully you'll get a little something um, to help you on my video also. Thanks for watching this video on the drain and fill my 2011 Toyota Prius CVT. If you've got a Toyota Prius that's got more than 60,000 miles on it, I definitely recommend you do a drain and fill to make your Prius last as long as possible. Please leave a comment or at least a thumbs up or thumbs down. I'd love to get some feedback on making these videos as I'm experimenting with some camera and filming techniques and working on some editing. Thanks again.